Coming up on Down Under EV Adventures, how can we use the snow mode on the Eto3? Welcome back everyone, this is episode 59, all about the snow mode. Well, we certainly don't get much snow where we live, here in Western Australia. However, you may still be able to use the snow mode and we'll learn today exactly what it does for the car. Now, we'll just give you a little bit of backdrop about the drive system on the Atto 3. So, the Atto 3 mile, it might look like a, a bit of an off-roader, it's only a front wheel drive so it's a two wheel drive system and the motor is on the front and it drives the front two wheels of the car and of course it's common for cars to also be rear wheel drive which is of course simply the rear wheels are doing the driving and the front wheels are just turning and they're also doing steering as well i couldn't find much information online about the traction on a front wheel drive as opposed to a rear wheel drive in EVs only I could find information mainly about petrol and diesel engines where they seem to suggest that the traction is better on a front wheel drive now my limited experience of driving EVs front wheel drive ones is that the traction is not as good as a rear wheel drive now I could be wrong so if there's any physicists out there who can maybe tell me what the physics might be in this situation but I just think that with the weight in front of the rear wheel, as the wheels are trying to move the car forward, I'm suggesting that the weight might help the traction of those rear wheels uh, on an EV with the high torque. So as you know, it's a 150 kilowatt motor, which is on the front axle of the car, you know, at the front, and it's turning those front wheels, and you're getting instant torque with an EV, so you, there's no gears to speak of in a car so you're getting that maximum torque straight away and I think with the weight behind the car I think it's harder for a front wheel drive to gain the traction on it so yeah, if there's any physicists who've got any information about that maybe you can let us know hit us up in the comments for that one but that's just my personal experience now obviously if you're just driving on the bitumen it's generally not an issue with the higher torque as long as you've got you know fairly decent tires on and the surface of the road is not too slippery or wet then you can you know pretty much easily accelerate rapidly now you can clearly see the case here for an all-wheel drive car of course whether you're on the bitumen or you know a loose surface really an all-wheel drive is better because you've got traction then on all four wheels which is ideal so I have owned a few four-wheel drives and done quite a lot of four-wheel driving over the years. So we, we had a couple of Subarus. We also had a Mitsubishi Pajero and we travelled around Australia, which was a really, really great four-wheel drive. We went some great places in it. And later on we had a Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. Now the great thing about the Mitsubishis is you can actually drive them in all-wheel drive, even on, you know, bitumen. They've got a, a mode where it's sort of simulates what a Subaru is, you know, Subaru's got a constant all-wheel drive. Um, but certainly the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, which I owned, you know, just a few years ago, that was a fantastic car, and I felt like it could just about go anywhere in it. Now, obviously, you know, modern-day EV all-wheel drives, you know, aren't quite as good as their petrol and diesel counterparts, but I feel like that's easily going to happen in the next five to ten years. It's going to be a a lot of breakthroughs I think and EVs are going to perform better um, but you know you can clearly see the case that an all-wheel drive certainly is great traction and if you're the sort of person who wants to go off-road um, and as yet you probably don't have you know you've only got limited choices I should say if you want to use an EV for that purpose so if you still want to do hardcore off-roading at this stage you know you're probably still better off with a a petrol or a diesel vehicle you know an EV probably is the ones available in Australia at the moment aren't quite up to scratch but anyway where does that leave us for today and what we can do with our little humble humble Atto so as you've seen with a front wheel drive you've got all that torque from a um, electric engine which is quite a lot and it's all going into those front wheels and causing it to spin just too quickly and, and as a result, you're just losing traction. There's just too much power, basically, going to this front wheels. Let's see what we can do then about that. So at a few places where I go for a walk, there's a few little slippery spots. And I did some tests with the Atto. 
and I can show it all to you right now. So this area here is one of my spots I take Zoe for a walk. It's, I wouldn't say it's my favorite spot, but it's a good spot, which is just on the outskirts of town. And it's right next to the KCGM super pit. So if you're not familiar with that, I'll put some footage on the screen now and explain what that is. So of course, Australia has a lot of mines and the super pit is one of them. It is a massive open pit gold mine. It's the second largest open pit gold mine in Australia and it's something like the sixth or seventh largest open pit mine in the world so it's pretty massive you really have to see it to believe it and anyway it's a, you know they've got lookouts there you can go and have a look at it generates a lot of money for the town and the region and employs a lot of people and basically it's the reason why the whole gold fields sort of exist why there's settlements here because of the gold rush and people came and lived here and it's probably the reason one of the reasons anyway why Kalgoorlie still exists today you know that the life of the super pit is um, believed to be for another 20 or 30 years even they're gonna mine gold there now if you're lucky enough to fly to Kalgoorlie um, the planes often actually fly over so you can have a a good look at the pit you, you know, got a chance to see it you know otherwise you know if you visit the town you can always go to the lookout so anyway that's the super pit and on the northern side of it is where I am today walking. So you can see the edge of the road here. It's not a very, it's not a very steep decline, but it's got gravel right on the edge and I have to pull up right at the edge of the road. And I have to look here before I can go out on the road, obviously, because I don't want to get hit by traffic. So when I come to this area for a walk, I just sort of pull off and park down here off the road because it's quite a little busy road this little road here and then I sort of turn around and come back out onto the highway and I have to wait for the traffic before I can go okay so I normally do drive in sport mode so I'll just drive up to the edge of this slippery gravel and I'll put it in sports mode and that will be my first test and we'll see how we go with it so you can see there's some of the many trucks which come down this road so I'll try in sport mode first, so, which is what I normally have the car in. This is with no trailer, and you, as you can see, I need to pull up to the edge of the road. Quite often there's a bit of traffic, so you can see I have to really pull right next to the road there. And therein lies the problem when you've got gravel. So... So you can see the real spin I'm getting there. Of course you can still drive up the kerb, but you know, you've got a bit of real spin there and gravel and stuff flicking up. So, you know, it's not ideal. So let's try the next now mode. Now I'm gonna go into normal mode, which will dampen down the acceleration and the torque. So let's try that. We'll just wait for the traffic to pass. All right, so you can see there's less, much less real spin. Now you can see I'm in eco mode, I'm ready to pull out. Still a little bit of real spin. Alright, so we'll try snow mode now, which will dampen down that acceleration and therefore the torque and should provide the best traction. Now I'm trying to go in a different spot every time I do this so that I'm not wearing the gravel in the same spot. Okay, now this is the snow mode here, which you just press and when you press it, you'll see there's a little icon on the screen there which shows that you're in the mode and all the other modes have been dis disabled so it doesn't mo matter what mode you're in 
you can be in sport, whatever, it doesn't matter. As soon as you put it into snow mode, all those modes are cancelled. And now the acceleration will really be dampened down and the torque as well. I'm doing this on a weekday, so there's a lot of cars. I probably should have done this on the weekend, but anyway. We'll now we'll take off. And you can see almost no wheel spin when I do that. I'll do a different spot. I'll just drive up slowly like I was going to leave this particular spot. And there we go. No wheel spin at all. So if you're not, you know, going too far and the your surface is a little bit loose, you know, if you're not going to go very fast, I should say, you might as well slip it into this mode because you're really going to dampen down that throttle and you're going to cause less wheel spin. So, you know, it, it's, it's a useful thing to have. You know, again, it's just another little thing which helps make the EV a little bit better than it otherwise normally would. This is where I come quite often to go for a walk and it's not so much this little bit here, it's just right at the end when you want to go back on the road. So that can really help the grip. Once you're back on the bitumen, I mean of course take it out of that mode, otherwise you're going to be driving around very very sluggishly. So it's just really, like I said, for those little slippery spots which you may encounter. Limitations of a front wheel drive as opposed to an all wheel drive and of course the fact that there's no real gearings to speak of so here's another little issue that i have sometimes at this spot here and like i said you can see that it's really not that steep a, a normal, normal four wheel drive or all wheel drive would just eat that up but the poor little atto will struggle on even something like this so we'll try this one all right, so I'm in normal mode. And like I said, I am going slightly on an angle, but of course, the more on an angle you go, generally speaking, it's easier and better for the car. But of course, there may be situations where you'll have to sort of tackle it head on. Or, you know, if you do find yourself in that, you know, one scenario where you can't turn too much, this just goes to show what you maybe can do. So we'll try it in normal mode now. There you go, you can, you can see there quite a bit of wheel spin. I can just get, just get up. It should be a little bit easier in eco. So again, bit of wheel spin there, and we did it. Okay, now we'll put it into snow mode. We'll see how much wheel spin we get now. And there we go, almost no wheel spin in snow mode.
So, look, this is not a panacea by any means, but that's where you can perhaps use that mode if you don't have snow. When it's gravelly, bit of a dirt track. You can see, you can see what I mean by the sorts of roads that we get here. I'll just put the window down so you can see. So these are the sorts of roads that you have. You get a lot of this sort of loose rock, gravelly sort of roads. And this is where I use the snow mode. It just gives you that little bit extra, I'll use the word traction in inverted commas. Well, I guess it is because you're, like I mentioned in the intro, the wheels are turning slower. And the idea is then that the tires are gripping. They've got more time to grip because they're not spinning and losing that traction, which you normally would get. All right, it's almost time to wrap up here. So I'm just going to give you some final thoughts on the snow mode. Now again, I'll just point out that I'm not a physicist. So all through the episode, I've been saying that it's reducing the torque as well. I'm actually not 100% sure if the torque has been reduced as well. I mean, definitely the acceleration has been reduced, but it could be that the torque is still all there. And it's just really the fact that you can't get that fast acceleration in that short time frame and that's why you're getting the better traction so I'd be interested to know if anyone does actually know if the torque is being reduced as well but definitely the power in the engine is, is dampened down and you definitely can't accelerate as quickly you know that the, you normally would be able to um, when it's in you know like sport or normal mode and all of that means the, you can see from the videos there clearly that um, you, you are definitely getting much less wheel spin and therefore better traction. So there you have it anyway. So I'm going to do the sign off today from inside the car. All right, well, I hope that helps you out. If you want to know what that mode was for, the snow mode, and how maybe you can use it to help you. So I thought I'd do the sign off today in real time. So thank you very much. For joining me everyone I really appreciate it if you haven't already subscribed I would love that as well and we'll see you very soon on down under EV adventures take care again and bye for now see ya <laughs>